right, welcome back to the Good Morning Night Just Show. And I believe, say, with all the things that we promised on now for the show today, we believe, say, we don't need to deliver them back to back to back with all the top stories, all the newspaper talks, and our special uh, interviews that we don't get so far. Uh, we just finished one better interview with uh, Isaiah Amada, and a uh, very, very uh, exceptional spoken word artist. Where they use spoken words through rap, they pass a message. And I believe that was a very, very insightful uh, interview. Well, we'll move on to another conversation we'll get today. I promise you, I said we get three better guests, and we're going to be talking to another another of our guests, uh, Ugochi Obidegu, and she's a safety expert. And yes, this is a very, very good conversation we need to have at times like this, seeing the current situation of the world. Now, good, welcome and good morning today, and welcome to Good Morning Ninja Show. How are you doing today? Very much. I'm very well. Yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Now, we honestly ask our guests this question because there is a pandemic, a lot of people didn't expect this to happen. So how are you feeling, honestly? Let's be honest. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> well, honestly, I'm fine. I'm really doing good because I've learned to, you know, rest when I should rest. I've learned to know when to journal. I've learned to know when to gist with my friends yeah. and just relax, pressures, you know, so I'm fine. <laughs> so, so because of the pandemic, you had to draw up a new plan on how the day of uh, how the days of your life would go you had to draw up a new plan right not totally i've always been big on relationships because okay. i understood that my kind of person i thrive in love i thrive in a loving atmosphere so when i begin to feel a certain type of way i reach out to my friends <laughs> that I was more conscious, you know, <laughs> because these are, these are um, new times. Everybody keeps using the word unprecedented. Definitely. Unprecedented. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, a lot <laughs> happened, and we did not expect it. As they say, we never expected it, but it happened, right? So we're here now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's, let, let's even move into today's conversation, and we're talking about uh, uh, creating uh, um, safety interventions. Now, it, we're talking safety. And we know that uh, it's very, very um, necessary for an individual or uh, we as people to take this as very important, you know. So this, today's conversation is how to create safety interventions. Now, um, to start off that, what, how, how can you uh, explain or describe safety interventions for people who are just watching so we can kick off from there? Okay, so a safety intervention would be something that has been put in place to ensure that you do not encounter harm, you do not encounter injury, you do not mm -hmm. encounter disease, or you do not encounter death. So anything that has been put in place to ensure that you are protected, it's a sort of barrier to ensure that no harm comes to the individual. Mm. So, so, so an example... Yes, example. Yes, it, please. An example would be, so we know the pandemic is on now, and the government has mandated that before you go to a public space, you must be putting on a face. Yeah. Now, that is an because it's trying to protect you from yourself, trying to protect you from the environment. It's just basically trying to protect you from harm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that, that's, that's like a perfect example because uh, I believe everybody can relate to that right now. The face mask is yeah. what we are using to, you know, to, to protect ourselves. So it's a safety intervention. Okay, cool. So um, looking at uh, the, 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 the workspace and how it is necessary for us to you know, have these interventions in place, we know that it's not something we're used, we've been used to. And uh, a lot of things have happened now that we have to create to be a new normal. So what are those things that you think in a workspace uh, would be necessary to put in place for safety um, sake as of now, moving forward? Okay, so the first of all, when you want to create an effective safety intervention, the thing is you have to be clear on what that intervention is supposed to do. So once you are clear, then for that thing. So in the workspace, there are different things that you're trying to protect you from. And mm -hmm. because there are different things, different interventions. So I'll just basically share what are the guidelines you should stay in mind when okay. you want to create a safe intervention. Okay. So the first would be you have to be clear on what that intervention is supposed to solve. Because if you are not clear on it, anything can happen, you don't think can go. And we do not want anything to go. We mm -hmm. really need it to be very specific. So if, for example, we're saying, children are having injuries on the playground and you want to stop injuries from happening on the playground. 
So that is you being clear from the beginning. Yeah. We're talking about the social distancing and public transportation, and we're saying because we understand that not everybody needs to go in their vehicle to work, and people need to move distance. What are the things we can put in place? So now that is you being clear. Yeah. So now after you are what it is that you're trying to do, the next thing would be to make sure that it is backed by evidence. We do not want to create an intervention because it's nice to have when it's not actually necessary. Mm. So it has to be back. So see in the case of the playground again, TB in that particular school, at the school clinic, at cases where the nurse has a record that maybe in the past one month or two months, so and so number of children have been injured on the playground and this is the kind of injury they have had. So now based on that evidence, we're able to create an intervention that suits that subject. Same for the mask the social distance in public transportation now. Yes. Because of the information that's been put out by the WHO, NCDC, and all that, we have evidence, and so we're able to create interventions that will suit that. Okay. So you start with being clear. Then the next thing you have to do is you need to make sure that it's evidence-based. Then, of course, you have to create an overall plan. Don't just um, create one sided plan. It has to be all around so that at any point in time, people are going to encounter that um, unsafe yeah. incident or unsafe condition, they are protected further. Okay, interesting. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break right now. Uh, when we come back, we're still going to be having this conversation. So please just stay with us. We'll be right back in a minute. Let's take a look at this video. Household hygiene is essential to keep your family safe. Did you know that the sodium hypochlorite, the active ingredient in hypo bleach, is equipped to fight viruses and germs? Add some bleach to water, soak a clean napkin in diluted bleach, and wipe off germs from common contact surfaces. Wipe off with hypo. Disinfect your own with hypo bleach always. Ipo, ipo. Endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. All right, welcome back. And I feel the Good Morning Niger Show. And we've been talking to our other guests today. And we'll be talking about safety. Yes, safety, safety. We can't overemphasize it because a lot of times we think that eh, it's not be our responsibility. Now, those people go do and we will just follow protocol. Now, we're talking about safety. Uh, as, as, as a safety intervention. And I have a question. For people who would uh, uh, just ignore these safety rules intentionally, like we're using the face mask thing as a case study uh, in, in the country now, knowing that you have to wear a face mask in order to prevent the spread of the virus. And we have people who would just Say, ah, beg, nalai, jari, this thing, nalai, I'm not interested. What do we do uh, to make sure that, w w what measures do we put in place to, you know, to counter people like this or to, to solve situations like that? So I'm going to say it's a collective responsibility. The individuals and then, so individuals, I'll start with individuals. Okay. Start. Ourselves, we need to help this. We really need to. So everybody needs to become an example. You have a platform, whether it's what state your your other social media platforms to speak up when you see people doing the wrong thing. Take people as much as possible. Because the truth is, the action or inaction of others can have a so if you are thinking it's not my business, so they are on their own. It can come back to harm you. Mm -hmm. So it's in your best interest to speak to when people doing the right thing, advocate for the right attitude take advantage of information, even among your friends. When you're hanging out with your friends, we say, and you've seen them, they showed up at that hand, what did you do? What did you say to them? Mm. Now, that's on the individual aspect. The government aspect of things is having systems for monitoring compliance. I was somewhere last week, and they were all, they were so conscious, if you are not putting on your face, somebody will stop you and you'll be fine. Or the transport not to pick extra passengers. And the reason for the passengers is because they knew that someone was sick. Um, uh, what they were not realizing. 
Yeah. Now, she will be told that somebody is treating you with so you don't do the right thing. But if that is what is going on, that I see it work last week. Like, if try it, they were the ones. No, don't carry more than this. Mm-hmm. This is a. Mm-hmm. Or put on your mask. So that makes it that it was because they knew that, and the district's monitoring were obvious in their hands. Like, there was a place I saw the police, there was a place I saw the military men were there. Yeah. Then I got to the area of it, and those were, it wasn't as. <laughs> It was like they knew what was going on. Interesting. It's a effort, you know. So ask the individual pick up to your friends, your circles of friends, your social media platforms. Just also, as much as possible, compliance monitoring out there on the street. That is one of these are the. I like that. I, I like I like the fact that you made it clear that it's also our responsibility personally to, you know, make sure that we are able to, you know, educate people, to sensitize people about these things and uh, the reason why we have to do them. Well, we're going to be looking at another video in a, in a short while. When we come back, we're still going to wrap this up in a few minutes. Let's check this other video out. Good morning, sir. I do wear more boy, boy. A caro and your manager. Or to Tomao. There were no Jama, the wine. In our coin, Uncle Nigeria, or to Tomane, in the Nigeria. Oh no, watch a high name. Could I tell you? Good morning. Household hygiene is essential to keep your family safe. Did you know that the sodium hypochlorite, the active ingredient in hypo bleach, is equipped to fight viruses and germs? Add some bleach to water, soak a clean napkin in diluted bleach, and wipe off germs from common contact surfaces. Wipe off with hypo. Disinfect your home with hypo bleach always. Ipo, Endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Nigeria Show. We still get one final conversation when we get with uh, Ugochi Obidiego, and a safety expert. And when they talk of how it's our responsibility to be safety conscious, because uh, last, last, now our life, and if we don't take care of them, nobody will take care of them for us. So, um, Ugochi, before you, we want to wrap this up now, but I would like you to give like a, um, a final conversation word, because a lot of people still believe that it is, uh, it is, it is the, the, the pandemic is a hoax. A lot of people still believe that it is not their responsibility to, to take care of themselves, that the government should make this possible. Is governments need to do that and do that. So even to the point where we're talking about the conversation of using the face mask and uh, maintaining social distancing, there are still people out there who still don't see this as necessary. So for someone who is a safety expert, who understands the, 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 the need to be safe at all times. So let's use the pandemic as our case study. And what are those words you would say to these kind of people who still believe that, uh, well, whatever it is, I will, I will still survive. Anyhow, anyhow. So what would you say to them? I would say that your safety is your personal responsibility. We are in a country where some of you feed yourself, you provide water for yourself, mm -hmm. you provide security. Mm -hmm. What they are still doing the roads and the earth you live in. So if you are doing all that, like, why would you be delegating your personal safety to someone else? It's your life. You've got to ensure that you make sure you are taking your own precautions. Because if you do not, you might endanger your image and by extension, every other person they would come in contact with. We do not want you to be a statistic. Hmm. This is why many people are, are sharing their stories so that you can understand that. This is not just tales by moonlight. Yes, so. <laughs> you know, but please take personal responsibility very seriously. Maintain social distancing. Wash hands as much as possible. Um, put on your face. These are not very simple things for crying out now. Yeah. You know, I saw it recently. A person said, "Is when you give people from bed to try to follow it. Give them the simple ones, and then it becomes a challenge. That's mm -hmm. two things. Mm -hmm. Personal." Possibility. Case rather, if the press 
All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you could come on the show today and share this uh, information with us and get to enlighten Nigerians on how safety is very, very compulsory and how personal it is. It is your, it's our responsibility. And I like one thing you said in your, in your final words that you just dropped. Now, you said you wouldn't want to be a statistic. Maybe I don't join you doing the numbers say, hey, and I'm part of the numbers where it don't happen. I, that is very, very key. So it's, it's left for individuals to make sure that we adhere to these rules and regulations. Thank you very much, Uguchi, for this conversation, and uh, thank you for your time. You're welcome. All right. All right. Uh, we just able to get a quick conversation with uh, Ugochi Obidi Igwe, and, uh, and uh, she's, a, she's a safety expert, and we decided to put this out there because we know we're in a pandemic. We know that there's a lot of us, uh, of us that don't understand what's going on. But uh, as from these conversations, we could tell what we need to do and the things that we have to do. Safety is key. Safety is very, very necessary. Remember, it is your responsibility. You have to stay safe. You can't blame anybody. Eh? Like, we they talk this one every day on top of the show. So we'll go on top one quick break. When we come back, the Good Morning Nigeria show still continues. And trust me, we still get better things for online store. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Na san mafi yawancin al'umma sun tsorata dan gane da kullowar cutar corona virus saboda karancin bayani ne yadda za mu killace kanmu Hasalima muna tantama akan lafiyar mu da na al'umma ko da yake akwai hanyoyi da dama da za mu iya tsare kanmu daga kamuwa da cutar COVID-19 daya daga cikin hanyoyin ku wasu ne wanke hannuwa da ruwa da sabulu akalla na dakika 20 kamar haka Musani, wanke hannu yana da matukar muhimmanci domin ko kashi 80 daga cikin yadda ake kamuwa da cutar coronavirus daga musaba hani.